Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today to do a review, a showdown of an old Gillette razor, the slim adjustable, versus a new Gillette razor, the Mach 3. Let's get started. Okay, we are all lathered up with my go-to for hardware reviews. I say it every time, Paraso White for sensitive skin. We are loaded up today. We're going to get our slim loaded up with a Permasharp double edge blade. Still using the Permasharp, although I do have a supply of Paul Silvers on their way. So I was able to find a new supplier that was able to give us quite a lot. So you'll be seeing those coming to our website again soon. Um, when you load a, a butterfly razor, it seems really obvious, but you know, you just turn the handle, you drop the blade in across the center bar, and you close it up. And on these adjustables from Gillette, you're gonna feel a final quarter turn. That's like the lock, the quarter turn lock. So you do wanna feel for that. When you make adjustments, you can adjust this razor with the doors closed. It does work. However, I always tell people it's like pushing the gas and the brakes at the same time. It's much easier to adjust it with the doors cracked and then tightened down. And that's just because one mechanism is pushing up the blade adjustment and then the doors are pulling down. So easier to adjust it when then cracked. Okay, so for our showdown today, a lot of guys out there who want to get started double edge are currently using something like this, the Mach 3. This made its debut in, in Gillette's era, um, not 100% sure at the top of my head, but I know it was in the mid to late 80s. And the Mach 3 has been a really popular razor ever since. And a lot of people who don't want to pay for the fusion prices end up getting the Mach 3. So it's kind of like their second tier of razors, in my opinion. I think that's their obvious position as well. Um, truth be told, I have fond memories of the Mach 3. I used it in, in high school and college, and uh, we want to shoot it out though. We want we want people who are have never used a double-edged razor and maybe coming from cartridges to see how easy it can be and how much fun it really can be. So we are going to get started first with the Mach 3. And we'll do this side over here. And I'll use all the same techniques, the skin stretching, the whole, whole nine yards like I normally do in a double-edged shave. Okay. That's actually not bad. I've done several of these um, cartridge shootouts now, and I'm, 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 guys, I know there's been comments that I'm acting or I'm, I'm a salesman for razors, so of course I'm going to say double edge. If you guys know my story, that's not why I got into this. I didn't get into this because I wanted to make a bunch of money in the world of shaving. I got into this because using cartridge razors gave me ingrown hairs and it was painful and was not enjoyable and I hated shaving. So I researched it and I ended up starting a company because I liked it so much. But I gotta tell you, this is not bad. Certainly better than the Fusion for me and the, um, uh, the Dorco razors we've done shootouts on and the uh, grocery store brand of cartridge razor. This is by far the nicest one. In terms of the amount of stubble left behind, it's not bad. Um, one of the bad habits that come from cartridges, because it has this flexible head that does this, is you end up having to put too much pressure. You're, you're chasing trying to get the stubble gone and you end up digging in. And while that will take the, the stubble down, of course, it can sometimes cut below the skin level, which is why you get an ingrown hair. So I'm trying not to chase that really smooth, oh, that's perfect. I'm just going for par. I'm just going to do one you know, pass, just kind of using ginger pressure. I 
I can tell you that it does have a tugging sensation that the cartridge, or sorry, that the double edge razor that I'm about to use, I'm assuming, because I've done a lot of double edge shaving, uh, is not going to have. Usually double edge is much more of an uh, easy, just kind of mows right through the hair. This is tugging, especially in my goatee area. It's really heavy, my hair growth here. I started, started to feel it. You can see it on my face. You can see the skin being pulled. You can see the whole, my whole hairline gets pulled down before it actually cuts. So I'm not just making it up that it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Now, for comparison, we're going to use the Slim Adjustable from Gillette, also 1960s, on setting number four. And see, that's just so much more effortless. And the reason for skin stretching is to give the razor an easier task in mowing down your hair, meaning you're going to raise the hair up and also flatten the skin so it has a much easier time. And this is, they're, they're, they're comparable. Both have a little bit of stubble left behind. Uh, I can tell you that the process was much easier with this. It was much more smooth and fast and easy. Yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I have a lot of experience with the Slim Adjustable. I have one at home, truth be told. So um, they, it does get used a lot in my bathroom. I think it's one of the best Gillette Adjustable razors made. I know a lot of people love the Fat Boy. Uh, those are great. I love the slimmer head of the Slim Adjustable. It does have a slightly slimmer handle, but um, you gotta remember, for, in Gillette's mind, this size of handle was about par for them, meaning there were other razors at the time, the Super Speed and the Aristocrat had a more similar handle to this than the Fat Boy. The Fat Boy was kind of a, a really girthy handle. But you can see it, when I'm cutting it down here, it's not tugging my hair down. You can hear it, it's just clean. And Yeah, I'm just getting that, that tugging sensation. Again, this is by far the best of all the cartridges I've used. Um, but I am getting that kind of that tuggy pulley sensation. I think if you have, you know, real thin hair or not a very heavy beard, I think you probably won't notice a gigantic difference between the two. But if you have coarse hair or sensitive skin or combination thereof, wow. You're gonna notice a difference. Now a lot of people think that the cartridge razors came out because of shaving technology. And I know that's what Gillette has told us. But guys, I always tell people that Gillette is primarily a marketing company and then secondarily they are a razor manufacturer and I know it sounds kind of crazy to think about but their their game of selling you nicer razors and nicer blades is not anything new if you know about Gillette history or have watched their videos you know that Gillette was always putting out new razors new blades new handles whatever you want to say always something new the new you know Starting back in 1904, you know, the, the razors in 1904, they improved them again by 1907. There was another razor, and oh, then the blades got better again. And, you know, as the decades went by, that was always the case. It's a better blade, better, smoother shape, closer. That's always the way they did it. And I, I can respect that. It's a marketing thing. But it actually corresponded with patents uh, for the most part. And whenever Gillette was facing a competitor who was going to copy their designs, they did what any good business should do. And they put out a improved design and then patented that and then put all their efforts into telling people that's what you need to use. But um, you can't blame them. That's just the game. And they've always been in the game of selling blades from the founding of the company in 19... Uh, 01 uh, with King Camp Gillette, King C. Gillette. He wanted to invent a disposable product that people always wanted again and again.
His good friend was an owner of a corking company that sold corks to bars and taverns, and so you could recork bottles of, of alcohol. And the bars and taverns constantly needed more corks from him. And he told, he told King, he said, hey, you need to invent something that you sell people the device once and then they need some kind of refill or some kind of you know, extra component again and again and again. Yeah, this is not bad. It's, it's just not, um, it's not as enjoyable. Another big thing of, of cartridges is they're expensive. Um, you know, the price of a cartridge versus the price of a double-edged blade, you're going to spend, you know, dollars per cartridge on this guy. Um, you're going to spend cents per blade on double-edged. And there's a lot of double-edged blade choices out there. You can get them as cheap as, you know, 10 or 20 cents. I think the most expensive double-edged blade is closer to 50 cents, like the feather blade, or even maybe a dollar. depends on where you buy it from. So, yeah, there are... There are some expensive double-edged blades, but most of them are in a sense. I need to um, relather my lower neck just a little bit. I sit here and talk with you guys and blab. My lather dries up. Lower neck is definitely the most sensitive area of most guys. I am in that group. It's the reason I I'm sitting before you today is because I had trouble shaving my lower neck, uh, particularly. Now, this is an adjustable razor, meaning I can turn this dial and get different exposures of blades. So it's kind of cool. It's not a one size fits all. So I'm actually going to dial it down a little bit for my lower neck. So lather is really important because it's doing a, a its primary job is not to smell nice or or whatever you know, just look really cool to use a brush. It's to hold water against your skin and does that by creating bubbles and creating this, you know, this medium of suspending water. Water is the best lubricant. And if you can suspend the water there, um, you're going to have good hydration and good lubrication during your shave. I don't even know if I want to shave my lower neck with this. I'm like having flashbacks. of ingrown hairs. Now one thing you can do is to really know the mapping of your grain on your face. So just like your fingerprint or just like a, a piece of wood has a has kind of a grain pattern, your facial hair has that same pattern as well. And going with the grain, super important. A lot of people get themselves into a situation of causing ingrown hairs because they're going against the grain, especially for your first pass. If you're someone who does multiple passes, you can get away with a, against the grain, maybe on your second or third pass, but um, not for your first. Cause irritation. So I always go with the grain. And rather than doing a bunch of um, passes, I've found it for my skin, my beard, more efficient to do blade buffing, meaning I'm not just going one stroke, done, and then I'll come back and go this way or this way. I'll just kind of work my way down like this. And that provides the, the blade buffing or the kind of the uh, repeat pass over it. It's just fine for my skin. And it doesn't cause any irritations for me. I've actually found that it reduces a lot of irritation by doing blade buffing. Generally a good shave. You know, I'm, I'm wrapping up here. Give myself a little rinse. I got to hand it. If you're going to pick a cartridge razor, the Mach 3 was, was not bad. Um, its downfalls are going to be the price of the cartridge. And if you have coarse hair or if you have sensitive skin, it may not be the best choice for you. It did have a tugging sensation, whereas my slim adjustable just went right through everything effortlessly. There's a reason why people choose to use double-edged razors. It's not because we're hipsters or trying to be cool. Um, that may be a small component of it. but uh, it's really because people enjoy it more. It becomes a hobby. I know it sounds really, really crazy that shaving can be your hobby, but when you can actually enjoy the hardware, enjoy the smell of the soaps, enjoy the process, making a lather with a brush, it just becomes more enjoyable. People end up getting into it. Um, their, their partner, their wife, their spouse, whoever, starts to maybe enjoy the different scents, the different um, you know, fragrances they're going to use. 
The skin usually looks a lot better over time. The brush provides excellent exfoliation. So it's, wet shaving is not just something that's like, oh, these guys are fancy shavers. It's more of just an enjoyable process. It's no different than if you like, you know, if you like beer, you know, buying uh, some domestic beer that's made in bulk, like maybe Budweiser or maybe Coors or something else, you may say, hey, that's okay. But maybe you like a craft beer. Maybe you want to enjoy that experience a bit more. You know, your goal is not to necessarily get inebriated. Your goal is to enjoy the process. And the same with, with, with shaving. Your goal is to enjoy the wet shaving process. And I think with using quality products like this, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. That's all I got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Please like, comment. If you've used a Mach 3 recently, if you're still using a Mach 3, why? Do you like it? Do you get great, great shaves with it? Let me know. And if you do let me know, you were entered into win this. The official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. Behold, in all of its glory. Uh, we like to send these out to people who leave a comment. We'll pick one randomly and send it out to you guys. But um, that's it. Thanks for checking out our channel, and we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving.